Hey guys, today we're going to solve uh, uh, inequalities again, but now we're going to deal with the variables on both sides of the inequality. Um, a couple things that you need to be aware of when we have um, inequalities with variables on both sides are two special cases. The first case is something like this, x plus 12 is greater than x plus 8. If we go ahead and try to solve it as we have before, um, we would do something like subtract x from both sides, and we've eliminated the variables, and we're left with this statement here saying 12 is greater than 8. Well, 12 is greater than 8. It's one of those, well, yeah, duh, of course, it's true. If you run into this situation where you've, where you've uh, eliminated the variables and you have an inequality that's true, what that means is the solution set is a set of all real numbers. And it seems to make sense if I have some number, whatever it is, and if I add 12 to one side but only add 8 to the other, of course this side will always be bigger. As you might imagine, the other situation is something like this, where if I have two, uh, two variables where that, uh, or that two numbers, and that same number I add 7 to one side, add 15 to the other, and I say this side is greater, what number could that be? Well, this is false. 7 is not greater than 15. In this case, there is absolutely no number that I could add 7 to, and it'd be bigger than that same number if I added 15 to. It just doesn't happen. Okay, so let's work with a couple problems that have um, variables on both sides. Now, uh, before you try this, I'm going to ask you to solve and graph, but I'm also going to ask you to tell me that is negative 3 a solution? Okay, go ahead and give it a shot. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and solve it like we uh, have before. Notice I have variables on both sides. Uh, I'm going to subtract 4y from both sides to get my variable terms over here. Now to get y alone, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. And when I divide by that negative, my sense of the inequality must change. So we say that um, our solution is, or a solution set is, all y's that are greater than or equal to negative 6. Okay. So this is the first time I've shown this as a solution set, but there's an infinite amount of solutions because there's an infinite amount of numbers that are larger than or equal to negative 6. So negative 6 is still our boundary point. And all numbers greater, it goes this way. Now, B, is negative 3 a solution? Now, I could go ahead and plug it into my inequality and see if it's true or false. <coughs> Excuse me. But when I have this graph... It's much easier to find out where that is on the graph and realize it's in the solution side. Uh, what I mean is, it's on this side of the boundary. Every number that's on this side of the boundary will make the original inequality true. Everything on this side over here would make it false. In, in other words, no number on this side of it um, is a solution. So yes, negative 3 is a solution. It's just one of an infinite amount. Okay, let's try the next one. Notice it says solve and graph, then it's asking is 37 a solution? So go ahead. Okay, so the first thing we'll do, well I could do a couple things. I'm gonna uh, combine like terms first. I just hate seeing um, all this stuff hanging out there. Uh, next I'm gonna distribute. I'm gonna start uh, combining and collecting uh, terms until I get it all the way down to here. I have a boundary point at negative 9. And the way I read this, it says all numbers x that are, notice that the less than is next to it, less than negative 9. So that means this arrow has to go this way. Now, we were talking about uh, writing them as a solution set. In solution set, we like to put the uh, variable on the left side so I would turn this around, but of course I have to turn everything around. In other words, this x is less than negative 9 could be written like this. And this says all numbers x that are less than negative 9. Is 37 a solution? Well, obviously it's not 37 as, I don't know, it's way up here someplace, which is in the false side. So of course, no, it is not a solution. All right, number 3. Again, it says solve and graph, but now it asks for something else also. Find the nearest integer solution to the boundary point. Often it's the case is the boundary point just lets us know that uh, that boundary between true and false and we want to know the nearest solution, to, newest, nearest integer solution to that boundary. So let's go ahead and uh, solve this. 
Okay, hopefully you distributed that negative 5, which is an easy error to make. Um, we get down here. I have my boundary point at negative 13 over 10. So it's over here at negative 13 over 10. It's in all x's that are greater than negative 13 over 10 are my solution. So that would be the solve and graph part of it. And we could just plot this like that and say that's my solution. It's really bad brackets. But that's my solution set. But now we want to know is find the nearest integer solution. So this is written as a improper fraction. I could just as easily write that as negative 1 and 3 tenths. So that's negative 1 and 3 tenths. So think about which integers are on both sides of it. Well, there's integers on both sides of it because it's in between. So what is this integer over here? A negative 2. What's this one? Negative 1. And so the nearest integer solution to the boundary is negative 1. Right there. Okay. Here um, it asks for find the largest integer solution of this inequality. So go ahead and give this one a try. Okay. Uh, I'm going to clear the fraction, multiplying through by 8. Now I'm going to, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides, divide by a positive 2, and I get um, my boundary point is at negative 3 over 2. It's actually, that should be closed. I made a mistake there. Um, it says that all my numbers are less than or equal to negative 3 over 2, so my arrow, of course, would go this way. Now again, I'm going to look at this and think of this as negative 1 in, I guess, 1 half. So it fi says, find the largest integer solution. So everything on this side of the boundary point, right here's my boundary, everything this way is true and is a solution. So what's the largest integer? Well, as we go, you know, moving this way up the number line, okay, what's the number that comes right before this one? Because I know the one that comes after that. Well, the number right here is negative 2. Because we get here to negative 1 and a half, here to negative 1, here to 0, here to 1 and 2, and keep going. So the answer is negative 2. Okay. Okay, go ahead and uh, solve and graph this. Okay, fairly simple. I'm going to distribute. Uh, I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. And now I'm going to what? Well, 36 is greater than 30. Well, duh, of course it is. Oh, since that's true, what that means is all real numbers will solve this. That means no matter what number I plug in to here and here, this side will always be larger than this side. Always. No matter what number I use. That's what it means. But what about the graph? What would that graph look like? What about that? It just goes on to negative infinity this direction and positive infinity to this direction. Right? See you guys tomorrow.